We are back. Now, um, what I'm going to discuss a little bit, and it's a lot of the questions sometimes that uh, a lot of drummers ask, is how to apply certain fills uh, when you're starting off as, as a drummer, starting to learn the basics. So I'm just going to go over a classic fill. And there's even a lot of ways with this classic fill that you can play around with stuff. So I'm going to take one of the first beats that I was showing you, and I'm going to apply this break or this fill. OK, ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. So basically, this, this, this fill is very, very common. It's been used a lot. But the interesting thing about this is you could break it down and make it long. You can break it down. You can make it short. And the important thing is to try to make everything sound, you know, nice and smooth. Not... Or... It should be nice and smooth. And... Even with this type of fill, you can play around stuff switching drums. And I'll do that slower. Now, one of the hardest things is to keep that break or that fill within time, or within the bars, or within the measure. So if you have the ability to count um, in a way that it doesn't mess up your playing, like in your head you're counting, and you say, well, I'm going to throw it, that, that, that uh, fill in the last bar, or in the, the third or the fourth measure, depending how long you want it. So this, I'm going to count it off, and I'm going to play it low so you can hear how I'm counting, and you'll see where I'm going to throw in the fill, and that way you'll understand where we're coming and where we're going out. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. So you can throw it in on the last four, or you can throw it in a little bit ahead on three and four. The important thing is always try to get back in on one. And that's sometimes the hardest thing. And it's normal that when you're sometimes doing a fill, even if it's a simple fill, it's, you know, sometimes the, 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 the rush that you're, oh, you know, you want to hurry up and finish the fill, or you might try to do it too fast, and then you're going to get out of time. So try to be as relaxed comfortable and just try to go through the break or through the fill and you know there's sometimes songs that don't even need fills as long as you're taking a good beat keep it steady and keep it with a nice pulse and and if you see people are moving either their head or their feet then you're doing a good job when I met my 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 friend Fernando who's the lead singer of the band um, I met him through a, a, a newspaper ad uh, and they were looking for a drummer. So when I met him and he saw me play uh, and I got the gig, uh, one of the things that he uh, asked me was, have you ever played to a, um, a click track or to a metronome? And I said, no, I've always played only to records. So he bought me a, a, a metronome and we, what we did was we put in a headphone jack. And so that way I had the different velocities and I would put on my headphones and I would practice to different times because he always said that in the event if we were going to record in a studio, well, 
to try to keep the best time possible, I would have to play to a click track. So I early on in my, my drumming career, I would say I got um, adjusted very quickly and easily to a click. And I practiced like from 15 until I was 16 uh, to different times, different rhythms, applying this. And then what got even better was when I got into drum machines, uh, it was way better to program stuff to play to because with a clicker, you know, you got to put quarter notes, 16 notes, or eighth notes, and it's always a pulse. And sometimes that pulse could get lost, you know, while you're playing. But if you have more stuff going on in the background, shakers, claps, maybe even some congas or something, you're concentrated more on playing and you're not so much concentrating to following the click because you have all this stuff in the background that's moving you. So... Uh, I really recommend that if you can get a click track or a drum machine or a metronome and practice to that, that's really going to help you a lot in the studio and also time-wise. And to be honest, I mean, I like, you know, I play to the click, but I'm not trying to be as exact. I'm just trying to stay within the margin. So there might be some parts where I might be a little bit on top of it. There might be times when I'm a little bit behind it. But, you know, that's, that's the human nature of it, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, we're not drum machines. We're, we're humans that we have a pulse and we have feelings and we have emotions and we have also the urge sometimes to rush when there's, you know, all this energy or there's sometimes when you, when you have to pull back. And that's something that I love to do, especially with my band, is that there's times where I can feel they're rushing. And it's so cool to hear how you're, you know, applying the brakes on the band. It's like, whoa, you know, so it's a cool thing. We're going into another phase right now, uh, which is um, a, an interesting phase, which it has to do with a little bit of more advanced stuff. And I want to share this with you because it's, it's not impossible to do. It's, it's more about just sticking your mind and, and, and putting yourself to practice and not to get frustrated and to lose patience. It's doing it over and over and over again until you nail it, until you feel comfortable with it. And, um, one of the things that, that helped me a lot when I was um, becoming a drummer, besides listening to music and, and, and trying to see my favorite drummers on TV, because I'm talking back way, way before when VHS was coming out and stuff like that, not even DVDs existed. Um, one of my favorite drummers, uh, besides Stuart Copeland, is, is Terry Bozio. And... Um, there was just so much stuff that I loved of him and I would hear of him, but I never had the opportunity to see him unless he would appear like on MTV or playing with somebody, you know, like Jeff Becker. So um, around 1990, I was able to go to a, a PASIC show in, in San Antonio, Texas, and he had come out with his first VHS, which is uh, Terry Bozio solo drums. And for me, that was like if they had handed me almost like the Bible of drumming. <laughs> and it was amazing because it was the first time I was going to be able to see one of my idols doing stuff that I had no idea how he was doing it. And, uh, and, and him explaining just like I'm trying to do now with you guys and trying to show a little bit of how I started and what I play. So I brought a couple of stuff uh, here to share with you that, that I took from that let's say video or that VHS or, or, or that DVD, which is out now in DVD. And I wanted to do these things, but then try to make it into my own, you know? I think us drummers were always influenced and inspired by people. And it's not that you're trying to rip them off or trying to copy them, but you're just inspired by them and you wanna just try to do that and turn it into your own, you know? And then you mix it all up. And, and so one of the things that, that I really liked about all this video and it, there's so much amazing stuff if you, if you can get it is there's a section where he talks about cross sticking he does this solo where he starts you know uh cross sticking between one tom and another tom obviously in that drum set that he had he had three rack toms and the floor toms but there's something that i do in my solo which is basically taken from from terry and i'm doing single strokes between the 14 and the 16 tom and and what i do is i just place my hands all over the place and just go back and forth and not really thinking about it too much. It's just having fun. So I'm going to do a little example of it slow and then I'll try to do it fast. Or maybe should I do it fast first and then do it slow? What do you think? What would be better? Go ahead, do it fast first. Okay.
So basically, what I'm doing is I'm just doing these single strokes and just going back and forth. And if you break it down, uh, it's something like this. So just have fun, just go over with your toms. You could do it also, you know, going between different drums. And, uh, and it's a cool thing, especially when, you know, when you're doing solos, you want to sometimes throw a little thing here and there that looks pretty cool. So to me, I thought that was pretty cool.